my invisible friends hello and welcome back to our series on electrical engineering tonight it is not about a lecture tonight is about a tutorial a recitation we are to solve this numerical exercise that was taken from the textbook by professors alexander and sadiko published by magro hill a three-phase source on the left is feeding a three-phase load on the right connected in a delta through three cables represented by those impedances and this one one plus j2 another one one plus j2 here and this one on the bottom one plus j2 and what is it they're asking well they're asking many things they're asking for the line current of phase a the line current of phase b and phase c they're asking also to compute what is the total power absorbed by the load what is the total power losses in the cables that connect the source to the load and what is the total power delivered by the source hmm, anything else oh yeah they also want to know what is the efficiency that means one percent of all the active power that the three-phase source delivers really arrives at the load and they also want to know what are the currents inside the delta the first thing that i do when i'm faced with a three-phase problem is convert every delta into a y if it's a delta of sources i divide the rms value of the sources by root three if it is a delta of impedances which is the case here tonight i divide the impedances 12 plus j 12 ohms by three and that converts that into a y and once i've done that the circuit will look like this one the source in this case hasn't changed the transmission links are the same the only thing is that the load now is in an equivalent y but why am i so intent on converting everything into a y for this reason i will show you in a moment that the electric potential at the center of the sources is the same electric potential at the center of the star of loads they are electrically speaking the same point let's see how that goes let me connect a resistor between those two points this resistor if we do that i will ask you what is the current flowing through that resistor well do you remember that in a three-phase balance system the line currents have the same magnitude but are out of phase by 120 degrees so when i apply kcl to the node in the center of the star of loads the sum of them is zero so the current through the resistor is zero amperes the only way that i get zero amps flowing through a resistor according to ohm's law is if the voltage drop in that resistor is zero which signifies that the point n and the point g have the same electric potential electrically speaking they have the same point so it doesn't matter if they are connected or not let me remove that from the drawing because that is just uh, getting in the way and uh, this application is really annoying it moves to the sides up and down i don't know if they will fix that now that i know that g and n this n and this g are electrically the same point i can concentrate on solving only the circuit only this loop only the phase a of the circuit independently of the other two phases I never draw this as an exam. In an exam, I go directly from the three-phase diagram to the single-phase diagram of phase A. That is the only one that I really need during the exam. That is the source of phase A between N and A. That is a transmission link. And that is the phase A of the load connected in a Y. 4 plus J4. See the lowercase a here and the uppercase a there? absolutely now we know what we're talking about the first question was to find the line current of phase a that current there well that current is just the source's value 100 with zero degrees divided by the impedance of that loop this one that has an rms value of 12.8 amps and some phase of negative 50 degrees the line currents in the other two phases have the same rms value the same magnitude 12.8 amps and but their phases are for phase b the phase of a minus 120 degrees this one negative 170 degrees and for phase c the phase of a plus 120 degrees that is 69.8 degrees what else what is the power absorbed by the load fine power absorbed by the load do you remember this formula here this one it says that 
if we know the RMS value of the current flowing through an impedance Z with a hat, the complex power absorbed by that impedance is the value of the impedance with a hat multiplied by the RMS value squared by the RMS value of the current squared. But the RMS value of a current is a real number. That is right. That is the formula we will use to compute the power absorbed by the load. Check this out. That will be 4 plus J4. That is the impedance, right? Multiply by 12.8 squared. That is the square of the RMS value of that current. What is that 3? What is that 3 doing there? Oh, because this drawing is only one third of the of the circuit. Of course, the load is three times bigger. It has the other two branches. We need to multiply that by three. Now, what are the power losses in the transmission system? The impedance one plus J2 multiplied by the square of the RMS value of the current 2.8 times three because we have three of those cables. What is the power of the source? Well, the power of the source must be according to Telegen's theory. If power in the source is the sum of the power in the load plus the power losses. Fine. What about the efficiency? The efficiency refers to how much of the active power that the source delivers arrives at the load. Mm, that way, the real part of the complex power at the load divided by the real part of the complex power at the source multiplied by 100. The last thing, what are the currents inside the delta? Now we know what is the current here. And we want to find what is the current from A to B. What is that current from A to B? Well, that current from A to B is, is a combination, right, of this current IA plus the current from C to A. Or I could write a KCL equation here that says, well, IA is the sum of, of I from A to B minus the current from C to A. I could write that. But let's do that in a phasor diagram. Remember, IA, the line current, is IAB minus ICA. Let's do that drawing down here. See? Here we have the three delta currents. I from A to B, from B to C, and from C to A. And we want to write that case equation. We know is that if we add IAB plus the negative of IAC down here, we get the line current IA in green. So that means that the delta current is going to be uh, the current in the in the line divided by root 3 and with a phase that is increased by 30 degrees according to this angle. And that is how we compute the delta current from A to B, the magnitude of the line current divided by root 3 and the phase increased by 30 degrees. In the calculator, we'll do that slightly different, but um, we, will do, uh, we will get the same result. So the magnitude divided by root 3, and then we multiply that by a complex number, 1 with 30 degrees, and that achieves exactly the same. Let's go to the calculator now. The first thing I do in the calculator is define the imaginary unit in J, and a constant A that really I will not do that this time, but I use that in almost every other three-phase problem. Right after that, I define with names the voltage of the source, as a real number because after all it has zero degrees of phase i define also the impedance of the load uh, four plus j4 and the impedance of the transmission line one plus j2 and we're ready we can compute the line current of phase a which is just the value of the source divided by the series combination of the impedance of the line and the impedance of the load and that is a current in rectangular mode Let's compute what is the power, the complex power absorbed by the load. It is three times the impedance of the load, a complex number multiplied by the square of the RMS value of the current in the line. That's what it is. Total. And what are the power losses in the transmission system? Three times the impedance of the transmission system multiplied by the square of the RMS value of that current. One more. The power delivered by the source, it's the sum of the two previous ones. Power losses plus the power of the load. And finally, what is the efficiency? Well, that is the ratio of the active power absorbed by the load divided by the active power delivered by the source in percent. It is, in our case, 80%. And that's great. Now we go and compute the currents in the delta IAB. 
is the current in the line I A divided by the square root of 3. And then we multiply that by 1 with 30 degrees to increase the phase by 30 degrees. And this is the current I A B inside the delta. Its RMS value is um, 7.39 amperes and its phase is negative 20 with 19 degrees and that is all my friends thank you very much for watching and i hope to meet with you all again in our next movie and this is the university of british columbia where i spent most of my days it is a tier one university with the highest number of international students in the whole continent of north america